Oh, yeah. High ISO and digital noise. I have three things to explain to you about this and your camera model, and you're not going to like one of the things I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Number one, go to your camera, put your ISO on the highest setting it can go. What number are you looking at? Mine or my Fuji X-T4? Mine says 12,800. What I want you to do is divide by two. That would put me at 6,400. 6,400 should be the highest ISO I go to because beyond that you're really pushing your chip on your camera model you know this is when the older digital cameras have a really big problem because the digital chips weren't as good as they are now with uh, resolution digital noise and grain so that's the first thing go to your highest ISO cut it in half that's the highest you should go to All right number two when processing your raw images do not raise the shadows and the blacks too high. This introduces noise immediately. Raising or lifting anything related to exposure will introduce or show more noise. Number three, the one you're not going to like. This one, this one's going to sting a little bit for some of you, but it's okay. Sometimes you have to be aware of why you're getting these results and what can you do differently to make your low light images look better. All right, I'm gonna read again. Lastly, if you find yourself tweaking or adjusting anything to all of your images all the time, most likely you're not exposing correctly in the camera. So if you're doing anything to your raw images or your JPEG files, say Photoshop, raising the levels, say Capture One or Lightroom, you're changing exposure, raising shadows in the blacks, you're altering the image that you captured and you're just enhancing a bad exposure. So if you expose that image correctly, your blacks should be fine and everything else should be fine. It should fall into place. But the question of today is digital noise or grain in low light imagery. And let me show you some low light images that I recently did and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Go to the video. Okay, so look, this was an image I captured just last night actually. And uh, this is a real job. And as you can tell, this is about as low light as you're gonna get. I mean, come on, it's just a handful of lights on the people from what they're wearing it's overflow from the stage lights um but let me show you this so this area right here okay all this black area if i were to just take my exposure and bring it up what do you see you see all this noise all this noise is from you pushing the exposure of the image beyond it's true exposure. So basically you're destroying your file. However, by bringing down the exposure, first of all, I am completely going off of this guy right here. I'm going off of the singer. Okay. If I want to bring this down to where he is, maybe bring down my highlight. Now, as far as the blacks go, this is what I saw last night. What I saw was people out there with lights on their faces from the necklaces and stage lighting. It looked awesome. Um, I'm not worried about exposing for all of these dark areas, but I did want to show you what happens when you um, raise your shadows or your blacks. Here's your blacks. You raise your blacks. Boom. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at all of that noise. So this has everything to do with what you're doing to your file after it's captured. So we recently went to Washington, D.C., and this was the only time I really, really wish I had a different lens on me. This was the 16 to 55 2.8. So 2.8 is the biggest eye I can go. And it, I had to, as you can see, bottom left, I had to shoot at ISO 8000 just so I could shoot at a 30th handheld. And 2.8 is the highest I can go. You know, the biggest eye I can go. Had I had my 16 millimeter 1.4 that 
That is four stops of light more that it would be able to capture, which means that 8,000 ISO could have been down to my 6,400, if not 4,000. Just because of what the, that lens is able to do, I would have had a better looking image. But according to the uh, equipment I was dealing with, you're seeing all this noise in here, and that's the best version of the file I'm going to have. This is another image from last night's job, and I love how this image looks. You know, you're exposing for the subject's skin, and I'm not worried about the background. Okay, I love how these blacks look. They, it just looks clean. Now, if I were, no, oh, check it out down here. I was able to shoot at ISO 2000 at 500th of a second. So I can stop action because I was working with my 85 millimeter 1.8. That allows me to do both of these things. Shoot faster, shoot at a lower ISO for less grain. Now, if I were to raise my blacks. Look at all that digital noise. This is digital noise. This is not grain. <laughs> this is not grain. This has nothing to do with the camera model that you are working with. This has everything to do with how you are exposing or messing with your image after the fact. So get rid of all that digital noise and your blacks are fine. These blacks are great because it was exposed correctly. If I incorrectly expose this image, you would see noise and, and digital grain all over the place because it was just wrong, <laughs> straight up wrong. So those are my three recommended things you need to pay attention to when you're on the job. If you're a working photographer like myself, um, you've been in many, many low light scenarios and you understand what I'm talking about. If this is new information to you, um, go play. You know, this is digital camera world these days, not film. So you can go take some pictures, look at it on your camera or your computer, go make an adjustment, but understand why. Like, what are you doing correctly compared to incorrectly? So follow those three rules and you should be okay. You know what I mean? All right, you guys, I'm out of here. See you in the next video. Stay focused on your dreams. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Peace. Peace.